For Far Cry fans who have been dying to pick up a bow again, there's hope. A far cry from the Himalayan mountains and the Pacific Islands, this backwater county in Montana is home to a religious cult hell-bent on the salvation of humanity from the pending collapse. It is also home to numerous militia and preppers with guns galore. I'm sure I'm not the only one eager to see whether the bow was going to be back in the game. And lo and behold, I saw three. From the outset of the game, the player has immediate access to everything he or she needs to clear out the peggies, a pistol, an assault rifle, and a bow. To the credit of the developers, it's more than possible to complete the entire game with your starting gear. Unlike in previous Far Cry installments, the starting bow is a compound bow. Its function is exactly the same as the recurve bow, which is now the final unlockable bow. This is a reversal of what most video games portray. Normally, the compound bow is depicted as the more powerful upgrade. Far Cry veterans will be familiar with the two-pin sight, with the center gap being on point for most close-range encounters. With the compound bow in the inventory, the player can immediately take out enemy outposts with absolute stealth, and with perfect stealth completion reward the player with extra cash, this bankrolls the player's growing arsenal of weapons. Immediately, the player can purchase attachments for all weapons, including the familiar red dot and marksman sights from previous games. The red dot sight replaces the pins with a single illuminated dot inside a ring, making for easy pinpoint shooting at close to mid-range. The marksman sight has markings to assist with the arrow drop at long distance. However, there are very few instances where this would even be needed, as it is very easy to be a silent infiltrator and knock off enemies up close. After helping the resistance, the next bow item is unlocked, and it is a new addition to the Far Cry list, the Slingshot. By default, it flicks rocks, which do no damage and is merely an extension of the distracting rock throw already available to the player. However, the slingshot can be loaded with every type of arrow, with some unique advantages. With no sights, the slingshot is aimed with a dot reticle on the HUD, and it is amazingly accurate. With a faster rate of fire and retaining the one hit kill against most enemies, the slingshot is likely the go-to choice for many players, wanting that arrow slinging satisfaction. And in honesty, it outperforms most of the guns. Rapid one-hit silent kills could not be a better option in most scenarios. The iconic recurve bow is back as the final upgrade. Stat-wise, it has the power and accuracy of the compound bow with the reload speed of the slingshot, plus the option to put on sights. This makes it, in theory, the best archery weapon in the game, and it does perform its role. For some reason, I still have a fondness for the slingshot as the assault weapon, probably because of its instinctive reticle. Still, the recurve bow had a permanent spot in my inventory for the rest of the game. As with previous games, the player can choose between regular, fire and explosive arrows. Fire arrows are highly situational, while explosive arrows don't do as much damage as an actual explosive weapon, though it can still bring down a helicopter with a single hit. It's no surprise that bows are more popular in Hope County as a hunting tool and a weapon. New to Far Cry 5, the player has access to specialists as guns for hire, each with unique weapons and abilities. One of them, Jess Black, is a master huntress. Upon freeing her from the lumber mill and completing a story mission, she joins you. As a hunter, she brings the bonuses of being difficult to spot their enemies and does not scare away animals. This makes her one of the best utilities as an ally, giving you the ability to hunt animals much more easily and selling the skins for good cash. And again, the bow gives you the additional skins on killing an animal, and it's required for several missions to get undamaged skins. Jess's detection bonus also reduces the likelihood of her ruining your stealth approach and getting killed. Being armed with a compound bow and a silent sidearm, Jess is the perfect ally for silent kills and outpost mastery. Apart from the silence bonus, the fact that the bow is a one-hit kill against most enemies means that she will kill what she hits instantly, and she is a very good shot at long distance, more so than other specialists with guns. It's actually amazing to see Jess do the work, and she occasionally pulls out a fire arrow to add to the chaos. 
That said, it's always quicker to do it yourself. As much as I love using the bows in Far Cry 5, does it really make sense to use them in lieu of better firearms? In Far Cry 4, the bow maintained its usefulness until silent sniper rifles were available later in the game. In Far Cry 5, silencers can be bought for every weapon, so the bow's stealth function is immediately redundant. Why use it when you can blitz through enemies in deadly silence with a suppressed submachine gun or rifle? With the gunplay being so smooth, Taking down an outpost with the rifle is quicker and more efficient. Though players will always see the bow as a challenging alternative, it does have notable advantages in combat over firearms. The fact that bows always kill regular enemies in a single hit makes it a more forgiving weapon to use. In contrast, only the 50 car sniper rifles can accomplish one hit kills. So if you need a lethal weapon for mid-range combat, a single arrow can do more than double tapping a rifle or pistol. Even so, headshotting with firearms is not difficult. Uniquely, the bow's ammunition choices free up slots for other weapons. Normally, I'd carry an automatic weapon, a sniper rifle, and an explosive weapon to deal with all possible threats. The bow can replace the flamethrower, rocket launcher, or grenade launcher, as well as being a silent weapon with a sight, allowing you to function just as effectively if you haven't unlocked all the weapon slots or want to carry your favourite guns. Much like the game's plot, the effectiveness of bow weapons made me question why I played the game. Sure, I looked forward to getting good headshots and double taps with the rifles and doing chain takedowns, but I kept on wanting to go back to using the bow. It never left my inventory, ever. Maybe it's Jacob's classical conditioning or the bliss making me want to stay with my bow. The best thing about this dilemma is that the game doesn't punish you for wanting to use the bow. It is good enough to clear the entire game if you wanted to use it as such. For archers, Far Cry 5 stands above its predecessor in that it never really becomes obsolete and is still the better choice in many circumstances. Above all, it's satisfying. The sound of the bow being shot, the arrows arc through the air, the thunk of the arrow hitting. Perhaps the game really is conditioning you to become a master archer. The simple sound and visual effects make you want to do it over and over again. Normally, I would add more critique to the way archery is depicted in the game, but I don't really have anything to say other than how fun the game was. Far Cry 5 is a game that is superbly developed and the design elements all fit in. The bows never feel out of place. Their look and feel are based on real bow designs that could and would be used in a survival scenario. The way they're used in Hope County makes sense. It gets the adrenaline going as you turn piggies into pin cushions. The bows in Far Cry 5 are more memorable than the iconic weapons in other gaming franchises because you always get to use them. It stays in your memory and like a certain song from the platters, you can never quite get it out of your head. I hope you enjoyed this spotlight. This is Lu Sensei. As usual, shoot straight and always aim for your best.